Hello everyone, I am Bea Marna MTV Dad and I'm going to present a topic about fiscal policy. So the topics that I am going to discuss are withdrawing fiscal stimulus, potential upsetting effects to withdrawing fiscal stimulus, investment and interest rates, exchange rates and the trade balance, inflation, fiscal contraction multipliers, and fiscal policy stance. So first is the topic about withdrawing fiscal stimulus. As the economy shifts from a recession and into an expansion, broader economic conditions will generally improve whereby unemployment falls and wages sense and private spending increases. With improving economic conditions, policymakers may choose to begin withdrawing fiscal stimulus by decreasing the size of the deficit or potentially by applying contractionary fiscal policy and running a budget surplus. There are two reasons to choose to withdraw fiscal stimulus by policymakers. The first reason is when the economy is near full capacity, the persistent fiscal stimulus can exacerbate the negative consequences of fiscal stimulus such as rising trade deficits, decreasing investment, and accelerating inflation. The second reason is the decreasing the size on a budget deficit that slows the growth of public debt. The government can withdraw fiscal stimulus by increasing taxes, decreasing spending, or a combination of two. So what is fiscal stimulus? Fiscal stimulus is an important tool that policymakers can use to reduce the severity of recessions with increases spending, cut taxes, or both to shore up households and businesses, demand for goods and services, the federal government provides fiscal stimulus during a recession. Well, targeted fiscal stimulus allows people and businesses to keep purchasing goods and services, disaggregate demand, lessening the recession's depth and length, and promoting a stronger recovery. In recessions, the economy produces less than it is capable when businesses are operating at full capacity and workers are fully employed, usually due to insufficient demand for goods and services. Example of this is in the case of COVID-19, the pandemic and public health response have temporarily reduced both the quantity of goods and services the economy can produce and the household's disposable income, which supports the demand for these goods and services. Other companies were down and falling demand due to lost income in such sectors can make the recession even deeper when it spreads to goods and services that could still be produced if the demand were there. Slowdowns and business failures in restaurants and retail means that their employees will face reduced hours of layoffs and they will in return reduce their own spending lowering demand for an even wider range of goods and services. Just like what I've experienced at my job, when the pandemic starts, we the employees began to have layoff because of the lockdown and after the lockdown ends and the restaurant of fast food reopens, not all employees have a schedule and then later on, all of us employees have less hours of duty due to few customers. So when it is safe to reopen businesses and for people to go back to work, the temporary supply constraints will be reduced but the economic slack, the gap between aggregate demand and what the economy is capable of producing with full use of its productive resources will likely to persist due to weak demand. Fiscal stimulus can reduce this heat to demand by providing people with the resources they need to continue purchasing goods and services. I have also an example related to coronavirus for stimulus policies. So, as the government started to ease public health restrictions after the initial lockdown, many countries implemented new policies to try to encourage spending. These policies are known as fiscal stimulus policies. As they aim to stimulate spending and the flow of the money in the economy, boosting demand for goods and services which results in growing economic output. The next topic is about potential upsetting effects to withdrawing fiscal stimulus. So when the government raises individual income taxes, individuals have less disposable income and decrease their spending on goods and services in response. 
The decrease in spending reduces aggregate demand for goods and services, slowing economic growth temporarily. Alternatively, when the government reduces spending, it reduces aggregate demand in the economy which temporarily slows economic growth. As such, when government reduces deficit, regardless of the mix of fiscal policy choices used to do so, the aggregate demand is expected to decrease in the near term. However, Withdrawing fiscal stimulus is expected to result in lower interest rates and more investment, a depreciation of the U.S. dollar and a shrinking trade deficit, and a slowing inflation rate. These effects tend to spur additional economic activity, partly upsetting to decline resulting from withdrawing fiscal stimulus. Whether the decrease in aggregate demand is problematic for overall economic performance depends on the overall state of the economy at that time. So next is the investment and interest rates. Withdrawing fiscal stimulus is likely to put downward pressure on domestic interest rates which encourages additional spending and investment, increasing economic activity. An explanation of how the rate of interest influences the level of investment in the economy. Higher interest rates reduce investments because higher rates increase the cost of borrowing and require investment to have a higher rate of return to be profitable. While lower interest rates increase investment by making it cheaper and easier for business to borrow money in order to finance new projects, they have much the same effect on consumers who might act on a major new purchase because low financing rates make it achievable. So, for example, is with higher rates, it is more expensive to borrow money from a bank. Saving money in a bank gives on a higher rate of return. So, therefore, using savings to finance investment has an opportunity cost of lower interest payment. Topic is exchange rate and the trade balance. Withdrawing fiscal stimulus would also be expected in the result to a depreciation of the U.S. dollar and an improved trade balance with the rest of the world. Assuming the shrinking deficit causes a decline in U.S. interest rates relative to interest rates abroad, individuals in the United States and abroad would rather make financial investments outside of the United States to benefit from those higher interest rates. The balance of rate impacts currency exchange rates as a supply and demand can lead to an appreciation or depreciation of currencies. A country with a high demand for its goods tends to export more than it imports will increase demand for its currency. While when a country that imports more than it, in, it exports will have less demand for its currency. Next in inflation. When fiscal stimulus is withdrawn, aggregate demand for goods and services in the economy also tends to shrink which is expected to slow inflation. Inflation can occur when prices rise due to increase in production costs such as raw materials and wages. A surge in demand for products and services can cause inflation as consumers are willing to pay more for the product. Some companies reap the rewards on inflation if they can change more for their products as a result of high demand for their goods. So just like for example in fast food chain restaurants like Jollibee, the price of the Jollibee products used to be cheap but now the price is even more expensive because of the raw materials and goods. Just like in the past few months, Jollibee corporations updated that their product has increased and even though the product cost has increased, many consumers or customers are still eating and coming back for their cravings, especially those people who love Jollibee. So, economists generally view relatively low and stable inflation as beneficial for economic growth because businesses and consumers are relatively certain about the future price of goods and can make efficient decisions with respect to investment and consumption over time. Next is fiscal contraction multipliers. The ultimate impact of the economy of withdrawing fiscal stimulus depends on the relative magnitude of its effects on aggregate demand, interest rates and investment, exchange rates and the trade deficit and inflation. 
The fiscal multiplier measures the impact of a fiscal stimulus on the gross domestic product of an economy. Fiscal stimulus is the increase in government spending to stimulate the economy. The fiscal multiplier, which is the impact of change in the money supply on the output of an economy. So, how can a change in fiscal policy have a multiplier effect on the economy? The answer is, a change in fiscal policy has a multiplier effect on the economy because fiscal policy affects spending, consumption, and investments levels in the economy. The multiplier effect is the amount that additional government spending affects income levels in the country. As shown in this table, different forms of fiscal stimulus ranging from 1.59 for each transfers to low-income individuals to 0.23 for reduced labor income taxes. Based on these estimates, increasing government spending on a consumption by 1% of gross domestic product would result in a 1.55% increase and decreasing labor income taxes by 1% of gross domestic product would result in a 0.23% increase in gross domestic product. The same fiscal multipliers in the fiscal expansion multiplier section can be used to estimate the impact of withdrawing fiscal stimulus by simply reversing the sign for each multiplier. So in this fiscal contraction multiplier, this table shows that the decreasing the government spending on consumption by 1% of gross domestic product is expected to reduce the real gross domestic product by 1.55% after the first year compared to no change in the fiscal policy. Alternatively, increasing labor income taxes by 1% of gross domestic product is expected to reduce real gross domestic product by 0.23% after the first year. Next is the fiscal policy stance. The fiscal stance of a government refers to how its level of spending and taxation impact on aggregate demand and economic growth. Higher taxes and a budget surplus is seen as fiscal consolidation or deflationary stance. A budget deficit has an expansionary impact. So, in fiscal consolidation or deflationary stance, if the government spending is less than taxation revenue, then the fiscal stance is deflationary. The government is reducing domestic demand by increasing tax, reducing consumer spending, or cutting government spending. In expansionary stance, if the government has higher government spending than tax revenues, the fiscal stance is expansionary as this tends to increase aggregate demand. For example, if the government cut income tax, households will increase spending. So this figure shows that the federal government has been running a budget deficit for the past 60 years. The federal government has been applying some level of fiscal stimulus to the economy for over half a century, although the level of stimulus has increased and decreased over time. Budget deficits tend to increase during and shortly after recessions, denoted in the gray bars. So as the policy makers attempt to buoy the economy by applying fiscal stimulus, the budget deficits tends to shrink as the economy enters into recovery and fiscal stimulus is less necessary to support economic growth. In recent years, the federal budget has backed this trend. After the structural deficit peaked in the 2009 at 7.5% gross domestic product, it began to decline through 2014, falling to about 2.0% of gross domestic product. In 2016, despite strong economic conditions, the structural deficits started to rise again, nearing 5.0% of gross domestic product in 2019. Examining overall budget deficits to judge the level of fiscal stimulus can be misleading as the levels of federal spending and revenue differ over time due to changes in the state of the economy rather than delivery choices made each year by Congress. That's all for my presentation. Thank you.